so from the last video we were using EDX but we can't because when we do a multiply the overflow is put into EDX so we need more room we've used up all of our general purpose registers A B C and D we need somewhere else to store the count the 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and so on and so forth so we're going to basically claim some memory or RAM on the computer. Uh, there's a couple, there's a few different types of memory. There's static and dynamic. The type of memory I'm going to show you is static, meaning it is loaded, it's there, it exists for the entire duration of the program. So if you notice up here we have the dot data section. And remember the dots mean these are instructions to the processor, or not the processor, the assembler, and they're not actual code instructions that run on the CPU. And so right here we're telling the assembler, hey, we're going to define some data. Well, we haven't defined any data, but if we did define data, then it would be found in this data section. How much room do we need? Well, let's take up this same amount of room as we did with these uh, general purpose registers. They are 32 bits wide. 32 bits divided by 8 bits in a byte makes 4 bytes wide. These registers are 4 bytes wide. Hence, we're doing 32-bit assembly. Anyway, let's uh, let's say the chunk of RAM we want to call it count. It will be a D word, which is short for double word or two words. One byte makes a word, or sorry, <laughs> eight bits make a byte. Two bytes make a word. So double word means that's four bytes. All right. That might have been a little weird. Let me. Here's one byte or eight bits. Okay. Well, two bytes make a word. Okay, this is a word. But then, if I have two of those, that makes a double word. All right, or 32 bits. Hopefully, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, what do we want to initialize the value to? We can say, hey, I'll just take whatever value is already there in the piece of RAM that I'm claiming. It's a lot like purchasing a home. Uh, or a used car, you know, no warranty attached, you just buy it and you get it as is and whatever condition it is in, that's what we're saying here. But we want this to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so let's start it out at 0. Alright, we're going to call it count. I could call it whatever I want to, but I think count, let's call it counter actually. It's a counter. Alright, uh, that's going to start the count out to 0. I think I'll tab that in so it's in line with the rest of our code like so. Uh, we want to increment counter, not EDX anymore, so increment counter, and then we want to compare the value in RAM represented at by counter with the value 5, and then if it's less than, jump to again and do it again. So I think we're good here. Let me hit F11, start the debugger up, Control alt d F11 into our code, and you can see here, well, first of all, look right here, counter is gone. All right. That we're we're basically saying this disassembled code, which is what the debugger shows us, it's not going off our original code, but the actual code as it is from the in the executable. Basically, we're saying, hey, there's a D word out there. Pointer means go out to this piece of memory. Now, I haven't really shown memory addressing modes. In fact, I believe this is the first video I've shown any type of memory. But for now, just trust me with this security cookie and all this stuff. Just skip it. Don't worry about it. This is what we're interested in. There is an address right there. I want to go to that location in RAM, and I want to increment it and treat it as a D word. So look at the first four bytes at that location. Now, here's a key concept when it comes to the Intel processing chip or the 32-bit 30, bit Intel processing chip is that it's byte addressable meaning these numbers here if I go to 2A3000 well if I go to 2A3001 say there was a 1 right here then I am moving on to the next byte which is 8 bits later than the byte before it alright so we are addressing bytes we are not addressing individual bits now we can actually look at what's what's out there in RAM. Let me go to debug, windows, memory, and we can have up to four windows in the memory, but we only really need one, so I'm going to bring that up. And now my screen real estate is getting a little bit tight. Let me scroll over to the right here. Actually, where's our... Let's step down to that increment. So F11, 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 F11. I'm down to the increment. I'm going to increment the word... 
located at this address and it's a hexadecimal value so I will grab the H on the end. I could prefix it with 0x here as the debugger does but I'll go control V hit enter and notice it's prefixed with 0x for us and now we are looking at that address in memory. In fact not, our, not only are we looking at that address we're looking at a good chunk of RAM here. All right, This is the memory as it is in the bits, the actual bits. Or remember, these are hexadecimal values, and two hexadecimal values make up one byte. All right, but these are the individual bytes in memory. These are the addresses. All right, so if I go here, here is one, two, three, four, five bytes, which would make this the fifth byte. Remember, it's zero base, so zero plus five is five. So you can see how these numbers out here are labeling these individual bytes out there in RAM. And then if we wish to interpret them as ASCII text, the debugger makes its best attempt to show us the values in ASCII as I scroll off the screen. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, notice these values are all zero. And the reason why that is is because we initialized it to zero. We said, hey, when we load our program up, we want a D word. We'll reference it as counter, but of course we're not referencing it as counter any anymore. The name counter became the address 2A3000 hex. Um, but I want a D word, which is one, two, three, four bytes and zero them out. Watch what happens when I do the increment here. I'm going to hit F11. Pay attention to this memory up here. F11. There you go. Here's our one uh, prefixed with zero. So it, it, it probably looks a little weird, actually. You might have been expecting to see the one go here, so then we would see zero, 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 one. But uh, the Intel CPU stores the least significant va part, part of the value at the least significant digit. We call that little Indian. If you Google little Indian or big Indian, basically... A little Indian means the least significant portion of the four byte value as it is right here is stored in the lowest address. All right, if we had the zero one here, then that would be big Indian, meaning the least significant portion is stored in the largest address, which would be four. All right, this would be, or actually three. This is zero 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 one zero two. 0, 3. So, and it really is dependent on the architecture you're on. Intel is little Indian, but if you go to other architectures, then they're big Indian. I believe the, for example, the Wii, if you want, if you make games, then you want to put them on the Wii, but you compile them on the Intel, then all of a sudden all your data is lined up backwards. So, it's critical. We're dealing with bytes. All right, and if you want multiple bytes to be part of your value, you need to know, well, is the least, smallest portion of the number down here is it up here it it matters especially at the example i use a lot is my bank account all right say my bank account has two bytes in it all right and thinking in hex if i if i have a one right here does that mean i have one dollar or does that mean i have one zero zero hex dollars okay so anyway i probably just butchered that for you but there we go we incremented it we have a one now we can compare that to five all right notice the big ugly memory thing here. Is it, is it 5? Well, it's not 5, so F11. Jump less than. Okay, do the multiply, add, ink, compare. It's not 5 yet. Jump less than. Notice this went up to a 2. It'll go up to a 3. It'll go up to a 4. And it reaches 5. We do the compare. Jump less than. No. So then we go to the return. Now, is the value that we want, is the right answer in the right register? Do you remember what the right answer was supposed to be. If you recall from the previous videos, it was supposed to be 16B, and I don't have that. Maybe I do have that chart. Do I still have that? Oh, I do right here. I do right here. Let me, let me, uh, here, just notice this. 16B is stored in ECX. Okay, and ECX holds our total here, which is 16B. This is probably becoming extremely confusing. If you remember, 3 to the 5, once we add them, add them all up, then it's the total is 363, which in hex is 16B. So yes, yes, we did get the right result. I can even prove it again. Let me show you another trick. F11, start the debugger, control alt D, F11. I want to let this loop, loop run and run and run and run until I hit the return down here. Okay, I don't want to have to step through it all again. So 
Click right here, put a breakpoint, hit a 5, and it stops when it reaches that point. And again, here is our 16B, our 16B. Okay, well, let's try 100. All right, let's try 100. Let me go over here and instead of saying go to 5, let's go to 100. All right, I definitely do not want to stop, step with the debugger all the way to 100, so I'm going to use the same trick there. Let me get down here and put the put the breakpoint right there. And F5, boomer on the ret, and 3 to the 0, plus 3 to the 1, plus 3 to the 2, plus 3 to the 2, blah, 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 blah. All right, the total is waiting for us at ECX. It is this value. Jamie is lying. All right, it, like I said, it overflowed. It, 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 3 to the 1 plus 3 to the 2 plus 3 to the 3, it very quickly overflows way larger than 32 bits. All right, it's several other bits or values hanging out here to the left that we can't see because they're gone. They've dropped to nowhere. So how do we detect how high we can actually add? Right. I, I, okay, so we can't go to 3 to the 100, but how, how could we detect if we can get to 3 to the 8th or 3 to the 20th? or How, how high can we go? Well, <laughs> I'll show you a trick in the next video.